वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर स्मिता शर्मा एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन फिजिक्स गवर्नमेंट डूंगर कॉलेज बीकानेर इन दिस स्लाइड वी विल डिस्कस द एसी एनालिसिस ऑफ द डिफरेंशियल एम्पलीफायर इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर द टॉपिक्स दैट वर कवर्ड वर सर्किट कॉन्फ़िगरेशन ऑफ अ डिफरेंशियल एम्पलीफायर dual input balanced output differential amplifier was discussed in detail and the dc analysis of the amplifier was carried out now in this in these uh, in this lecture we will discuss the ac analysis of dual input balanced output differential amplifier first we again see the diagram circuit diagram of dual input balanced output differential amplifier so in this circuit there are two input signals vin1 and vin2 that are applied to the bases b1 and b2 of the transistors q1 and q2 and output voltage is measured between the two collectors c1 and c2 which are at the same dc potential now we wish to carry out the ac analysis of this circuit now why ac analysis is carried out ac analysis helps us to derive an expression for the voltage gain because this is an amplifier so we uh, uh, we are interested in its gain gain of voltage gain so by doing ac analysis we derive an expression for voltage gain and input resistance can also be calculated uh, that is of the differential amplifier now what what we will have to do in order to carry out ac analysis in order to perform an ac analysis we need an ac equivalent circuit in the same way uh, before we had carry when we had carried out dc analysis we had made a dc equivalent circuit now here we will design ac equivalent circuit now how can ac equivalent circuit be made uh, this can be made by following two points first plus vcc and minus ve that is the two batteries are set to zero second the transistors are replaced by their t equivalent model small signal t equivalent models now following these two points the ac circuit is as shown so uh, we car carry we will carry out ac analysis of dual input balanced output differential amplifier so this is ac equivalent circuit of the dual input balanced output differential amplifier on looking through the diagram on the left hand side is the equivalent circuit of the first section of the uh, differential amplifier and on the right hand side it is the second section of the differential amplifier these are represented by two uh, by written as uh, q2 the related uh, terms are all uh, represented by symbol 2 and the q1 transistors uh, terms are all related by uh, symbol 1 e1 and e2 both the emitters are connected as shown in the center b1 b2 are connect uh, shown on near in first loop and second loop and c1 and c2 are connect uh, are shown at the far end left hand side and right hand side uh, input has been provided at the base b1 and base b2 of the two transistors these are the input and output waveforms uh, the way they are uh, given and they are provided now first of all by the ac analysis we were saying that we we can calculate the voltage gain so we'll calculate the voltage gain for this we'll have to consider following points ie1 is considered equal to ie2 so that the two emitter uh, ac emitter resistances 
of transistors Q1 and Q2 are same and thus they are denoted as shown in figure by Re. Also the voltage across each collector resistor is shown out of phase by 180 degree with respect to input voltages VIN1 and VIN2 as shown in figure. The VIN2 polarity is just opposite to that of collector voltage uh, in both the side on both the sides left hand side and right hand side. This is because the configuration that we have chosen is common emitter configuration in which if the input voltage is positive then the um, output is always negative, uh, negative going. If uh, input is positive going then output is negative going. Now this is again the, uh, the same circuit. Now um, we will carry out the mathematical analysis. One more thing that we have considered here is as seen from the diagram uh, V0 is the voltage between C2 and C1. Here we have give, uh, written a positive sign near C2 and negative sign near C1. This is because the sign polarity of the output voltage V0 indicates that the voltage at collector C2 is assumed to be more positive with respect to that at collector C1 even though both of them are negative with respect to ground. So uh, by diagram we can see the ground terminal is uh, uh, noted as plus and C1 is noted as minus. In the same way the ground terminal at C2 is uh, given plus, uh, plus and C2 is negative. This means ground is more positive with respect to C2 or C1. But on comparing C2 and C1 we have assumed that C2 is more positive with respect to C1. So uh, the signs are shown in the uh, as shown in the diagram. Now uh, two loops are clearly shown in the figure 1 and 2. We will write Kirchhoff's voltage equation for the two loops. These are simple equation 1 and 2. These can clearly be understood. VIN1 has positive sign and the current flow um, indicates all the equa equation 1 and 2. Now here uh, in place of IB1 and IB2 we can use the relations IE1 upon beta AC. This is because current gain is defined as beta which is always equal to IE, IB upon IE1. Uh, IE upon IB. So we can replace IB1 by IE1 and beta AC. Uh, on replacement we finally obtain the two relations. Now this can further be simplified if we consider IRIN1 upon beta AC to be very small. Generally it is very small so we neglect them and finally the leftover terms can be rearranged uh, in terms of IE1 and IE2. We get equation 3 and 4. So the simplified version of equations 1 and 2 are 3 and 4. Here IE1 uh, terms are uh, kept uh, at one place and IE2 terms are kept at one place. So this, this creates two simultaneous equations and these can be solved so that we can obtain IE1 and IE2. So it can be solved by either method. Here I have used Kramer's rule to solve it and any method can be used. So we finally obtained IE1 and IE2 in equation 5 and 6. This you can uh, solve in, um, in your copies and it is very easy to obtain. Now. 
we have calculate uh, uh, calculated ie1 and ie2 now we will calculate the output voltage now uh, see in the diagram uh, we have to calculate output voltage now we have considered c2 to be more positive with respect to c1 so output voltage will simply be vc2 minus vc1 now what will be vc2 now vc2 is the voltage at the collector c2 and uh, the there is uh, resistor rc between vc2 and uh, collector and ground and we know voltage of ground is always zero so uh, and uh, ground is more positive with respect to collector so what we can write uh, zero minus vc2 that is the potential difference because zero is greater more positive so we will write zero minus vc2 is equal to the current and current and the resistor product of current and resistor in between so what is the current and resistor resistor is rc and the current is ic2 so what we can write 0 minus vc2 is equals to ic2 into rc or taking the minus sign on the other side what we get vc2 is equal to ic2 into rc that i have written here in the same manner we can calculate vc1 on further simplification we obtain rc is, uh, into ic1 minus ic2 now generally we consider ie and ic currents to be approximately same so we can replace ic1 and ic2 by ie1 and ie2 so output voltage will be rc ie1 minus ie2 Now putting the values of IE1 and IE2 uh, as they were calculated before and finally solving we uh, obtain the output voltage as shown by equation 8th. Now in equation 8th we it is clear that a differential amplifier amplifies the difference between the two input signals as it was expected but now we want to calculate the voltage gain the voltage gain in order to calculate the voltage gain we need two things one output voltage that we have calculated and the input voltage the here in this case because there are two ends and two inputs are provided so we need difference in input voltages so vid is defined as vin1 minus vin2 that is the difference in the input voltages so the voltage gain of dual input balanced output differential amplifier ad will now be output voltage upon input voltage equal to vo upon vid on simplification we finally obtain it is equal to rc upon small re so this is the voltage gain of the dual input balanced output differential amplifier now we can other parameters that can be calculated are differential input resistor output resistance and current gain but before discussing them we will first consider the inverting and non-inverting inputs So now inverting and non-inverting inputs. In the differential amplifier circuit, the input voltage VIN1 is called non-inverting input because a positive voltage VIN1 acting alone produces a positive output voltage. This can be seen from the formula below. Uh, we note if we keep VIN2 equal to 0, then the output voltage is always positive as uh, uh, VIN1 is positive. So this uh, end is always termed non-inverting input. In the same way, the positive voltage VIN2 acting alone produces a negative output voltage. If we keep VIN1 to be 0, 
then output voltage will be minus of VIN2. So, this VIN2 is called inverting input. Consequently, the base terminal V1 to which input VIN1 is applied is referred to as non-inverting input terminal and the base terminal V2 to which input VIN2 is applied is referred to as inverting input terminal. But these two terminals can always be interchanged. Here we have considered two terminal uh, to be uh, the collector C2 to be more positive with respect to uh, uh, more positive with respect to C1. So these two inputs can always be interchanged. Now we will calculate differential input resistance using the same AC equivalent circuit. Now first of all we will define what do, do we mean by the input resistance. It is defined as the equivalent resistance that would be measured at either input terminal with the other terminal grounded. So what is the definition? First of all make one of the terminal uh, input terminal ground so uh, there will be no signal and it is it is directly convert uh, connected to the ground and we are measuring the input resistance at one of the terminals that resistance will is termed as differential input resistance this means that the input resistance ri1 seen from input signal source VIN1 is determined with the signal source VIN2 set at 0 and vice versa. So, if we calculate RI1 then we will have to uh, put VIN2 to 0 and if we want to calculate RI2 then we will have to put VIN1 to 0. Generally, RIN1 and RIN2 are very small so in this derivation they are ignored. Now uh, mathematically RI1 can be defined as VIN1 upon IB1 voltage upon current input uh, signal, ign signal voltage and uh, the current flowing through it base current is flowing through it so base current and what is the condition VIN2 should be 0. Now again in place of IB1 we have replaced them with the help of, uh, with current gain and emitter current as shown in the equation. Now we know the value of IE1 so we are putting it and simplifying it so we get RI1. Now uh, in this equation of Ri1 what we have to do we have to calculate what um, we have to put the condition Vin2 equal to 0. When we place it uh, and further simplify it uh, we get the following equation. Now this equation can further be simplified by considering Re is very much Re is very much greater than small Re. So uh, generally Re is neglected as compared to Re. So in place of Re plus two capital Re, we can write two R cap uh, two capital Re, and in place of small Re plus capital Re, we can write capital Re. So, further approximating, we finally obtain Ri1 equal to 2 beta AC into Re. So, this is the input resistance at the uh, terminal first. When uh, the signal source uh, at the terminal 2 is kept at 0. In the same way, we can calculate Ri2 and it also comes out to be 2 beta AC RE. 
now we will calculate the third parameter that is output resistance this this is this its calculation is very simple but first we'll define what do we mean by the output resistance it is defined as the equivalent resistance that would be measured at either output terminal with respect to ground kisi bhi output terminal par at any output terminal with respect to ground we can calculate the resistance and that resistance will be the output resistance so the output resistance ro1 what will be ro1 it will be measured between c1 and ground this already we have calculated what was it it was equal to collector resistor rc initially we had calculated it so rc1 is equals to rc2 is equals to rc this is the output resistance now fourth parameter that we calculate in ac analysis is the current gain the current gain of the differential amplifier is undefined so we do not work it out this is because differential amplifier is a small signal amplifier so it is generally used as a voltage amplifier and not as a current or power amplifier so we can we do generally do not need to calculate current gain so here by doing ac analysis we have calculated the four parameters essential to study a differential amplifier and to study its signal response now in coming slides we'll see what else is needed to make an operational amplifiers because we have studied differential amplifier now uh, one more property important property has been missed that is common mode rejection ratio in the next slide we'll first cover the common mode rejection ratio and then we'll take the other uh, two things that is level translator and constant current source to make uh, these two are also essential to make an operational amplifier thank you